You're watching Crosspoint TV with Pastor Don Spradling, a ministry of Crosspoint Community Church in Tyler, Texas. Good morning, Crosspoint. What a beautiful day we have, a great Sunday. We will rejoice in this good day that God has given us. We are glad to see you here in the house of God. We start a new theme for the month of June. It's on love. We've now tackled three different subjects the last three months. One was on faith. The other was on hope. But today we start a trek and a journey through the month of June on love is. So let's get to it. The first theme is love is transformational. Transformational. First John 3, 16 says, this is how we've come to understand and to experience love. Christ sacrificed his life for us. Now, we've been engaged in this theme for the last 90 days of the big three Christian doctrines, faith, hope, and love. And today, we start on this perception that we need to look at in love. Someone said, the voice you believe will determine the future you experience. Let me say that again. The voice you are listening to and believing will be the future you experience. It's my highest hope today that I can persuade you to give credence to the Scripture, to give honor to the Word of God. We're all influenced by outside voices speaking into our life, and we're shaped by that voice. We all have the personal freedom of choosing whose voice and which voice we'll give, we will give attention to or we will give acceptance to. And so the primacy of this message is to make sure you have an adequate knowledge of what love is according to the Scripture, according to what the Bible says about this awesome subject. First John 3, 14 says, the way we know that we have been transformed or transferred from death to life is that we have authentic love for our brothers and sisters, that we can actually have in us that force and power that embraces our brother or sister. Christ sacrificed his life for us, and we need to follow that same template and sacrifice our life for others. That doesn't mean we have to go to a cross, but it does mean that our thoughts, our actions, and our life purpose should be centered around how we can be of strength to our brother, our sister, how we can help one another. Verse 23 says, affirms those who obey God's voice live in him and he in us. Those who are listening to that voice and obeying God's voice are the ones in which he lives in and we live in him, the ultimate. I know that we preachers are a strange breed, but we are who we are. They say it is what it is. A few days ago, I was sitting in the uh, Houston terminal, and w we were waiting on our next plane, and there were just thousands of people rushing by. I'm sitting there looking at all of this, and I'm wondering how many of these trafficking souls are spiritually born? How many of these people know redemption and salvation? What a job we have cut out for us because the majority of them do not know Christ as you and I know him. They've never been spiritually birthed into the kingdom of God. And I sat there and my soul wept inside to have the opportunity like I have today to speak of the love of Christ, to try to persuade them to experience this love for themselves, 
to see what God's word promises. Jesus didn't come to save us from our sins as much as he came to save us for the kind of life that he has created for us. He wanted to give us an abundant life, not have us to give up an abundant life for his life, but to give us an abundant life. Our lives are most often shaped by two groups of people, those who love us and those who hurt us. Two different groups who will affect you. But it is love that is weaved into the tapestry of every human story and every human life that makes a difference for each of us. I've noted something, and I think you will affirm. Loved people love people. People who are being loved will love others. Hurt people hurt people. People who have frustrations and anger and hostility in them will hurt others, will, will take their anger and hostility out on others. Biblical love is transformational love. It's love that makes a difference, changes the landscape wherever it is. When Christ's love touches you, it changes you in every way. I don't, I'm sure that every one of you recall your moment of conversion, your moment of salvation. What a transforming spiritual culture took place in your soul. I remember it as if it were yesterday when my sins were lifted and suddenly I knew everything was right with me and God. I wouldn't take anything for that sensation and that sense of significance. When he touches you, it changes you forever. You're transformed, the Bible says, from death to life. You've been taken out of the land of the dying and lifted into the land of living. You're given a new name a new purpose, and a new sense of significance about you. When I got up from that altar, I knew my life was going to be different from then on. I knew that my pathway was going to be on a different course. Our purpose in creation was to receive love in salvation and to give love in service, to receive it because he said, my love I give to you. And to give it out. Because he said, as I am sent, so send I you. You are sent to give love. Now religion and love are two very, very different forces in your life. Religion says, clean up your mess. But Love says, Christ came to clean up your mess. It doesn't give us the uh, freedom of irresponsibility or to be less than responsible for our actions. In fact, we're not free from responsibility. We're being, we are being set free from the idea that we've got to be good enough. We've got to be perfect enough before he can love us, and before his love will reach us. The Bible says, let us not love with tongue or words only, but with actions and in truth, 1 John three eighteen. Don't just love in words. It's easy to uh, speak it, but it's quite a different thing to act it. I want to say some things about love. Number one, love is real energy. It's not a myth. It's not a pie in the sky kind of a thing. Real energy is found in love. It's an action force, forcing you, changing you, giving you a way of life. It's the battery for the light that needs to turn on in you. 
It's gasoline to ignite your engine. It's energy in motion for you and I. Love is. Love, secondly, is a real emotion. It's a real emotion for all of us. You actually get to feel God's love going on in your life. That's why it's transforming. As you sense that your life has been transformed, that your sins have been taken, and that you've been given a right living, your debt's paid. There is a feeling about that. I can tell you right now, anyone who does not love, the Bible says, remains in death. If you're not in love, you are remaining in death. Death is no emotion. There is no feeling whatsoever when you are laid out. This is how we know we have passed from death to life because we have love one for the other. That's how we know. Uh, you can put the gauge to your life and you will know whether or not you love one another. And let me tell you, it doesn't mean just love those who love you. It means love those who are unlovely. And uh, the test is on there. Thirdly, love is a real experience. You, you are given the experience of love. You can talk about it. That's why you have a testimony. You are actually given a testimony. When Someone said, when you're bitten, you're smitten. And when, when you first fall in love, you are smitten. You've been, you've been given the experience of a transforming experience. The testimony of a young lad who was blind in the New Testament. And Christ came his way and healed him. The Pharisees and the Sadducees and those who didn't agree with what was going on were interviewing him, and they said, who was it that healed you? And he said, I don't know who he was. I just know I was blind, and now I see. I know I've had an experience that's for my betterment. I know I have been changed from darkness to light. I know that because I experienced that. This is how we come, as our text says, to understand and experience love. That it's a, it is an energy, an emotion, and an experience that we all get to enjoy. So if we're going to understand and experience love, we need to know some things about that. First of all, love isn't complacent. It's compassionate. It's compassionate. When the Titanic sank in its maiden voyage, 1,500 souls perished in the icy waters of the North Atlantic. There were 20 lifeboats that were let down off of that ship. Only one-third of the number that was needed. But the passengers didn't get off and get into the lifeboats because they had been, they had been brainwashed that the Titanic would not sink, that it was the unsinkable ship. But they, in the last moment, saw that it was going to sink, and they began to cry out for lifeboats and try to frantically find one. And they plunged themselves into the frigid waters trying to reach one. Only one lifeboat made his way back to try to find some survivors. And one of the people who was in that lifeboat was interviewed and uh, asked about it. And he said, we heard their cries, but we did little to save anyone. It's one thing to have uh, hope, uh, and it's another to have a sense of hopelessness. These people were hopeless. Hopeless. And yet there was a lifeboat in the vicinity, but the complacency of the individuals in those lifeboats was an issue that brought death and not liberty or salvation or ultimate escape for these wonderful folk. Authentic love is compassionate, not complacent. It doesn't just 
sit inside the lifeboat, wish others were better. It reaches out to make a difference. It tries to save those who are perishing. Those who are outside the ark are the boat of safety. I wonder sometimes if you and I don't get so complacent in the house of God and in the relationship we hold with Christ that we forget there are thousands of people, as I saw in the Houston airport a few days ago, who are without Christ, who needs us, who needs the light. I know that we're not responsible for everyone, but what I'm saying is, are you praying for God to direct you to people who need you, people who will listen to you? Are you asking God to give you the grace and the ability to make a difference in someone's life and to bring life to them instead of darkness? Love isn't complacent, it's compassionate. And it isn't selfish, it's selfless. Our life focus is skewed. We are by nature a selfish creation. We get up taking care of ourselves and we go to bed taking care of ourselves. And I know that that's all a part of nature. It's all a part of life. But we need to balance it, don't we? Every now and then we need to be literally overcome by the reality that someone needs us and we are the only Bible they will ever see or hear. Focusing on sinning less doesn't guarantee you will love more. But if you focus on loving more, it will always guarantee you will sin less. Focus on love and loving more, reaching more, helping more, doing more. Pure love has less selfish pollutant and more servant heart. It's more active. Love isn't selfish. It's selfless. Thirdly, love isn't passive. It's active. It's alive. It's well. John 13, verse 14, the word says, "I new command I give you, love one another. Always love one another. As I loved you, so love one another. The template was set. We don't look for someone else to give us a new drawing, it was Jesus, an active love. People will be able to identify you by the active love you have for one another. They'll also be able to identify you if you don't have that. They'll say, I don't see the love of Christ in that person. Here's a verse that I hope you will mark and keep and be reminded of. 1 Peter 4. Eight. And here it is. Listen. Above all, love each other deeply. I love the way it's stated. Love each other deeply. Get beyond the surface. Get into the heart and the soul of man. Because the Bible says love covers a multitude of differences, of sins, of wrongs of issues that you may otherwise be repelled by. Above all, love each other deeply. Each one of us should use our giftings to benefit and serve others. I'm always blessed when I look at our worship team up here. These are not paid worship people. These are people who voluntarily their services, their giftings. They have to come and practice. They have to set aside time. And and it takes a commitment to do it. But they do it so that for 20, 25 minutes here in this platform in front of you, they can be servant hearts for you who are lifting up God's worship in your presence. You administer God's grace 
and goodwill by giving yourself in that capacity, by giving yourself in that way. You ever think of the, all the people who serve? Our, I can tell you if we took away the donuts and, uh, uh, and the goodies that we give out at, the, at our coffee bar, I'd hear all kinds of screams. But that doesn't just happen. We made a choice to invest in goodwill for you. And we have people who have to get up early and do things and serve you and serve the church in a way that says we want to deeply be involved in administering the love of Christ in the church of Jesus. Someone said to me this past week, they were witnessing to someone and saying, we sure would like to see you come to our church. And they said something about, well, last church I went to wasn't friendly and blah, 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 blah. And he said to him, I'll tell you, I don't know if you will want to come to our church, but I will tell you this. I guarantee you, if you come to Cross Point, you will be loved on from the moment you get in until you leave. You'll have to make up your mind whether or not you want to come to that place, but you will not leave there without having been loved on. I thought, what a wonderful testimony and witness that one of the lay people could say that and say it with conviction. Christ set love in motion when he went to Calvary. That's the kind of love you and I are challenged to give out today. So we should love one another the same way he loved us. In light of that, you and I are urged to get about loving one another. We should love everyone in every circumstance. Now that's where it gets gritty. That's where it gets harder when you do not appreciate what just went on. But you say, God has called me to love that person or love that church anyway. Love is where true Christianity begins and ends. When love is there, Christ's aliveness is there. Hi, I'm Don Spradling. I'm the founding pastor of Cross Point Community Church. Let me thank you for being a part of this service today. And we want to invite you to be a part of a 9 o'clock or 1030 service at Cross Point. It's been good having you on the broadcast. I look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you for watching our program today. We would love for you to visit us on a Sunday. If we can partner with you in prayer, or if you would like to help financially support this ministry, please give us a call or go to our website and select the contact page. 